I've got my domain, I've got my hosting, and I've got WordPress on my host. What's next? Okay, so the, the first thing I'd say is to not stress too much. You know, <laughs> um, I, I think I see this so much, especially with my students. This, it's, it's so easy to go down that rabbit hole of, I have to have my website finished. It has to have all these pages and it has to be perfect. My name is Rona Wielden and I'm a small business owner and I created the My Small Business and Me podcast to help you on your entrepreneurial journey, no matter whether you're a complete newbie or you've been trading for several years. So hit subscribe, settle down and be inspired. Welcome to the very first My Small Business and Me podcast with me, Rona Wielden. The first interview is with Kelly Sparks. Kelly is a WordPress expert and a web developer. And what she doesn't know about creating websites really isn't worth knowing about. In the podcast, I start off by asking Kelly to share her small business journey as an owner and then we spend the majority of the interview sharing Kelly's hints and tips on how to create a website which really brings you business and we start off by looking at if you're completely new to websites and where you should start from um, the very first initial steps and also if you have a website Kelly gives you some great advice on how to really look at it and audit it. Then we move on to talk about website trends at the moment what's in and what isn't and Kelly shares details about her online course as well, the website formula. I'm sure you'll find the interview extremely informative. And towards the end, you'll find Kelly's three practical tips that you can make to your website. So I hope you enjoy the interview and I'll see you at the end. A very warm welcome, Kelly, to the My Small Business and Me podcast. It's so lovely to have you here. Hi, Rona. Thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be on here. As my first guest as well. So thank you. Before we talk about all of your expertise in website design and WordPress, I really would love for you to share your personal small business journey with my listeners, please. Okay, so it's quite, it's not a traditional journey, and I'm actually not really a traditional web developer, I don't think. Um, I'm quite arty and creative, and I always have been, and I actually didn't even start programming until I was 18. I didn't do it at all at school, um, and then I, I taught myself and worked my way through and ended up being a programmer and managing large teams of programmers, but again, quite a not very creative. It wasn't very me. Um, I did love it. I love programming and, and managing programmers, but it just wasn't what I wanted to do. And I knew that. And then um, when I had my daughter, I decided to, to, to leave programming behind and become an interior designer, um, which is quite a switch. <laughs> Um, and and that's when I met you, Rona, wasn't it? Um, through blogging. Uh, and and yes, yeah, so I, I went on an interior design course and even went on TV uh, on the Great Interior Design Challenge. Wow. Yeah. So um, and I absolutely love interior design. I mean, I love designing my own home. I've been developing properties since I was in my 20s. And um, so, so, yes, yeah, so I love interior design and color and and but I still had that feeling when I started taking on clients that I just really missed uh, programming and helping people with the tech so I did a lot of technical support all through my career and so I was um, really excited to come up with the idea of uh, creating a business where I could help small business owners specifically creative small business owners so people like interior designers and florists and photographers, the people who are now my friends that I'd met through blogging and they were finding it so hard to find the right developer that understood like 
how to be how to make it as pretty and beautiful as they wanted while it's still being super functional and converting well for their businesses and it's really interesting because I've worked with quite a few web developers um in my time as flower owner and now um this new podcast and I think it's really unusual to find a woman involved in the industry don't you think I think it was really unusual when I first started, but it's not so unusual now, um, thankfully. And um, there's a lot more women in tech, which is great. Um, but I still think it's quite unusual to have someone who understands the programming in the back end of a database, as well as the design, um, which is, is what I bring to the table. So why WordPress? Why did, why did that attract you? Is it because it's the most popular platform or what was it? Um, so originally, um, it was when I was working at Sony um, in the computer games department, which is very exciting. And one of the guys there was using WordPress. So that was my first introduction to it. Um, and he wanted me to help him create a website. And um, I absolutely loved it. Um, and then, but since then, obviously, there's a lot of new platforms that have come around. And they're all good for different things. But the thing that I really love about WordPress is the fact that it's just so flexible. So you... Um, you start your business off and you might not know what you want to do and then you decide okay I need I want to do a um, podcast like you're doing Rona you know and then it's so easy to just edit your website and put this extra stuff on there um, or you want to do a, a course you can add in um, a, what's called a plugin, which is just like a, a small piece of code, super easy to add in. You don't need any coding experience at all. And suddenly your website has all this extra capability. It can be a membership. It can basically be whatever you want. So the reason I love it so much is that it's super flexible and can grow with your business. And so that's why I only do WordPress websites and I teach my students how to build their own WordPress websites. You're obviously very, very passionate about WordPress. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's super boring. <laughs> not at all. No, I'm very pleased you're very, very passionate about um, WordPress because you helped me massively when I had some issues with my website a few years ago. And um, even though at the time I was umming and eyeing and I actually opened up a Squarespace account and I really struggled. I know it's supposed to be easy, but I struggled with it. And you were there to give me the... Um, all the advantages of what, of what WordPress can offer and if it hadn't been for that you wouldn't have been able to help me build my online course platform for my Instagram for Floris online course students so yeah and the website for this um, podcast as well so if there are lots of people I'm sure who are listening who are in different stages of their pod their, sorry their website journey so if you're a brand newbie to starting a small business what advice would you give people and then we'll talk later about advice you give to people who already have a website set up so for newbies what would you say are the first few steps that they need to think about okay so the first step definitely is registering your domain name um it's so important to to save that piece of the internet for yourself even if you're not quite ready yet to um, launch your website and the other thing that that gives you is the ability to register an email address so so that when people clients contact you in the in the beginning, you've got a professional looking email address. So like Rona at my small business and me rather than Rona at hotmail.com. And what, where would you suggest that people actually sign up for domains? There are so many, it's quite hard to know who to choose. So what would your advice be? Yeah, it's, it is super hard to choose, but I think for someone who, and also there are lots of offers out there that might be very tempting. Um, because the thing with the domain name is obviously your business hopefully will um, will grow and stay around for years. So this is a, like a yearly money making thing for these companies. Um, so a lot of them will offer you like two ninety nine deal for a year, and then the next year it will go up. So that's the first thing I'd say to check is to make sure what it's going to go up to, and don't be tempted by the um, the very cheap first you know, offers. Um, mm. But I like to use and I recommend Google domains, um, sim mostly because it makes it super easy to set up your own email address. And that's what I was saying before, you need that professional looking email address. And if you register with Google, um, I think it's like £10. And then you have to pay extra monthly for your email hosting. But you've got everything in one place. And it just makes it so easy to set everything up. So you're not going setting up hosting in one place and then trying to um, 
you're not registering your domain in one place and then going somewhere else to try and set up your email address. And what advice would you give to people who are, who think they have the company name, they want to call their business, and then they go and check maybe on a, on Google domains and they find it's already gone? What would you do? To, I mean, are there different extensions you can put on the end or, or what would your advice be? Okay, so yeah, there are different extensions that you can put on the end. So say for ex- if you're in the UK and you want a UK business, most people have .co.uk. Um, but obviously you could look at .com. Um, I like to use .coms because it feels more worldwide. But if you're a specific UK business, then use UK. And if you can buy both, then buy both. I mean, it's, you know, if you buy two, it's, that bit, it's a bit more money, but it's worth it in the long run. You've got your domain. What's the next step? Okay, so the next step is to sort out hosting. And again, okay. it sounds very complicated, but if you choose the right host, um, it's it's very simple. And WordPress is a one-click install. So you register and then click, I want WordPress. And it's as simple as that. You've, you've got a basic WordPress website. So for the people who are completely... I know one of your um, fortes is you. there's no techno babble when it comes to talking to you. You make everything sound so simple. So if I've never, ever had a website before, can you just explain more about what a host is? What what does it, what benefit, do you have to have it? What, what does it do? Okay, so yes, you definitely have to have a host. If you think of the host as like the, um, the bricks and mortar of your house, you know, you need that to have the inside of your house. So the host, the host is where, all the website files are stored. So, okay. so you definitely need that. And that is where the, your WordPress installation will be stored. So I know I struggled when I was wondering what to use as a hosting company. Can you, what's your advice on some of the better hosting companies to use? Because I've had lots of challenges, as you know. Um, so different hosting companies offer different services. So it depends on your business, really. Um, but for just getting started, Bluehost, I've had good experiences with, and they have a um, quite a good support team. Um, but for people who are a bit further down the journey, and also Bluehost are, are very reasonable, but people a bit further down the journey, I love Flywheel. Um, mm. It's a great host. I use it for all of my clients um, and all of my websites. And um, their host, their um, support is absolutely phenomenal. It's so good. Okay, so I've got my domain, I've got my hosting, and I've got WordPress on my host. What's next? Okay, so the, the first thing I'd say is to not stress too much. You know, <laughs> um, I, I think I see this so much, especially with my students. This, it's, it's so easy to go down that rabbit hole of, I have to have my website finished. It has to have all these pages and it has to be perfect. You know, web, your website is not going to be perfect straight away. Uh, my first website wasn't perfect. Um, it just, you just have to get something up there, uh, even if it's just a single page. And, and one tool that I love uh, for WordPress, which is a plugin, um, which I mentioned before, um, is, a, is the tool Elementor, and it's a page builder. And it allows you to see the page exactly as the user would see it when you're editing it, which can just makes everything so much easier. It's a more visual process, which appeals to me, and I know appeals to a lot of my clients. So do you pay for Elementor, or do you, can you just download it free? Um, you can download a free version, um, and but it's obviously got some limitations, but you can start with the free version, definitely. Um, it's got templates in there, so you can choose different templates to, to suit your business. So it, you, it's, it, it's like imagining a Word document when you open it up and you've got a template. It's just the same for, for a website. It, it fills, makes it all look pretty for you, and then you just have to change the images and change the text. That makes it much so easier. if people are new to Elementor, how can they learn how to use it? Um, so it's very straightforward. Um, I've actually got an introduction video on my YouTube channel as well, just to talk you through the basics and also an introduction video on how to get started with WordPress. Um, it's just, if you just think of it as like, you know, if you were following a recipe, it's just step by step, just follow it step by step. And in the end, you will have a website, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> so how long do you think people should allow from getting their domain 
getting their host and building their website how you know if they're a complete newbie would you allow a month or three months or what would you really suggest as the sort of average time I think that um, it depends how much time you've got to give to it you know if you're right at the beginning of your business journey you might have more time while you're waiting to build up clients but if you are just creating your first website and you've already got clients and obviously it's going to take you a little longer like everything um, but I'd say that I like you to get a, a, just one page up as quickly as you can, you know, um, you could spend two days on it, uh, just so you've got somewhere to send people, just mm. so that you've got, even if it's just like one homepage that with nothing else, that just says who you are, um, what you do, how you can, how you can help people, that's, that's a key thing, like, always think, how can I help when people come to your website, they're not interested in you. They're interested <laughs> in themselves. And, and what can this website do to help me? So we've talked about people who are brand new to websites. If you currently have a website, but you don't feel that it's bringing your business the kind of leads or, or just generally you're not happy with it, what would you recommend they do? So the first thing I'd say is to give yourself an audit or pay someone to do an audit for you um, and just look at each page and think about what is this page doing for me? Why have I written this page? So on your contact page, for example, you know, what I, why have I got this contact page? Do you want them to get in touch? You know, some businesses, I know you, Rona, <laughs> for example, you get a lot of people emailing you and maybe you don't want lots of people emailing you. Or maybe that's the first step in the customer journey. So you want to make sure that that page is, is, how easy is it for a person to get in touch using that page? How easy is it on your about page for people to understand what it is you can offer them, what services you're doing? Is your about page all about you and not about the client? Is your about page written in third person you know <laughs> things like that people so, buy so kelly people. says so third person if you just explain that so people are yeah, so like sure. on my website instead of saying hi i'm kelly you know i can help you build your website um i'd be like kelly helps people build websites it's just so like stilted and corporate the third person and, yeah the third second person, person. Mm. yeah so so it's much nicer to be yourself and mm -hmm. is your website you you know is your mm. website your brand that's what I'd say you know if you've if you started with some colors and now you've changed them and you're really good on Instagram and you're getting the clients from Instagram to your website but then when they get there they're like oh this this is not what I've just found from Instagram this is like false advertising <laughs> um, so yeah so think about that you know are your colors consistent on your website with your other branding that you're doing um is it I think the key thing is it you just look at it mm -hmm. is it me and is it doing everything that I wanted to do and if it's not so if no one is subscribing to your newsletter then look at where that is you know if that's the key mm -hmm. thing you want people to do is that buried in your footer or on your contact page you know put it on your home page so just yeah think about your website as a whole and do a bit of planning that's what I'd say before you even start touching it just do a bit of planning and really think about each of the pages that you've got. So that leads on very nicely to chatting about what you feel are the key pages that people need to have on a website okay so obviously the the main one is the home page mm -hmm. and also to make sure that your logo at the top sends people to your home page people expect to click on the logo and get taken to your home page even if you've got home in your menu it's just a, a brain thing that uh, a functionality thing that helps people get where they want to be um so yes, your homepage and that homepage should summarize everything on your website. So it should have each of your services. And I don't mean like a massive blurb about my website design services, just, just a little paragraph to say what it is that you do. Um, and then if you have a shop, you know, a few of your key products, but again, don't overwhelm people. Make sure that the key things that you want your client to do are all featured on the homepage and explained well, because you want to encourage them to click through. And the other page that you should definitely have are your about page, which I've mentioned mm. already, which um, is the second most visited page on most websites. And like I said before, but they want to find out about your business and about how you can help them, not about you personally. So 
they don't want to know that I'm an interior designer as soon as they click on there you know that's something for way down on the about page it's more about how I can help you with your website um, and then um, the other page that's super duper important is your contact page and this just needs formatting in a way that works for your business like I said before if your contacts you don't want people to get in touch with you you don't want them emailing you then don't put that right at the top um, if you, or don't put that on at all but if that is your main thing that you want people to do then put that right at the top if you're a bricks and mortar business, make sure there's a map on there and make sure people can find you. There's so many tips that I could give you about this, but yeah, contact page, super important. Um, and then you should have your, at least one page that describes what you do. Um, so you're like a services page, or if you're a photographer, then you should have a portfolio or case studies or things that help people build trust with you and trust your business. Even if, even if it's, even if you don't have that straight away, that's fine. Just, just something that shows what you do is, is great. Now I have to ask because of my background, how important do you feel it is to have a blog on your website? A blog is so important, especially if you want to rank on search engines. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into search engine optimization on this. It's like a whole, a whole other podcast. Um, but, but yes, so the way that search engines love you and promote you more is to see that you are updating your content regularly. So that is one of the things, that's one of the reasons that I like to teach people how to update their own website. And even my clients, you know, like you, Rona, you know, I'm always teaching you and trying to, pushing you to do, do it yourself because it's so important to keep yeah. your website updated. And one of the really good ways you can do that is by producing a weekly blog post. And blogs are not what they used to be. You know, they don't have to be um, like a news thing and they don't have to be stale. They could be a podcast. You know, if you do podcasts, if you do um, YouTube videos or Instagram TV, anything like that, you could use your blog as a place to um, put the transcript up. Uh, and it just helps people who are on Google rather than in whichever platform that you've got your content on. Uh, find find your website and find you because that is the ultimate goal no matter what content you're putting out there you need to make sure it's it is represented on your website because you want to get people to your website and that is where you want to be building your list rather than building up these huge social media following and not capitalizing on that if that goes away tomorrow have you got all of their email addresses you know can you con continue to um, get in touch with them it's really interesting you should say about your list because um, I wanted to ask your opinion on on list email list providers because um, I've been using Mailchimp and I'm really interested about moving to Flowdesk. What do you think about the different platforms? So again, it's just like everything. There's so many different platforms, and it depends what you want from your business. So Flowdesk is. Um, I haven't really used it that much. I'm thinking about moving over to that myself, but it's very visual um, and. It's if you if you want your content to look lovely, like you, Rona, you know, it's all about your photography and your your um, uh, your your aesthetic and your brand is so strong that you want to continue that. And um, then something like Flowdesk makes it quite easy with templates, like I was saying before about Elementor with your website. Um, there's also other things like you mentioned Mailchimp um, mm -hmm. Mailchimp is a good one to get started on, but you might outgrow it. But you, there is a free plan that's that's quite easy to, and it's easy to set up in the, the first instance. I think the key is whichever one you go for is to just make sure that you are collecting email addresses as soon as you can. Um, and like I said right at the beginning, even if you just have one page for your website in the beginning that has a bit about you and has a sign up, you know, with maybe um, a download so they can find out more about your business. And that's so important. Absolutely. I wish I'd started sooner, actually. Um, but yeah, I yeah, totally. So important. Um, website design. Now, when I first had my first website ooh, over 10 years ago, things have changed just a little. What do you think are the key trends at the moment in website design? OK, so I think um, simplicity. Uh, which makes it easier for you guys as well. <laughs> Keep it so simple. Um, the the use of white space. You know, if you look at go and look at a website that you love after this, and 
think about why you like it. And if you look at it, it's probably got a lot of white space on there and it doesn't have to be white. It's just it, white space just refers to the space that's around the content. So like if you have an image and text, not, not right next to each other, put a bit of a gap in there. Um, think about a grid as well. So try and if you scroll down your screen, try and keep things straight mm -hmm. um or you can have things overlay but you know just just try and keep the main body of the content straight or to full to the edge um just because it just it's soothing for the user as they're scrolling they don't they're not their eyes are not going everywhere um uh, because you want that's what you that's your main aim is to keep the visitor on your site as long as possible so you want it to be a nice calming experience for them so less text simple to the point copy, um, very strong, powerful images, which can be full screen. So that's quite a trend, you know, a nice full screen image um, or, you know, that any images that you've got, just make sure that they represent you and your brand. That's that is super important. Now, when we're talking about website design, one thing that's also changed since I st first started having a website was the increase in people looking at websites on their mobile and tablet as well can you talk to us about what I think they call it responsive design is yeah sure so responsive design means that your website is going to look awesome on a mobile or on a desktop or on a tablet so these are three very different size devices so what works beautifully on your desktop and you want to take advantage of that when you have got that space you want to make sure it looks amazing mm -hmm. but then maybe you don't do certain things on a mobile device like auto playing videos for example you know if someone is using their mobile data they don't want videos playing um and yes on a mobile it's just a lot simpler um and and a tablet as well some of the large tablets will still display the desktop version but a smaller tablet it's good to have like the burger menu so in, you'll see it if you look on mobile websites if you look at anyone's website or not anyone but a lot of people's <laughs> website on your mo on your mobile you'll see in the corner instead of having like a a menu tiny because mm. you wouldn't be able to see it or like massive which i've seen some people do like taking up the whole of the first page so you're looking at your phone and all you can see is a menu um, you have like the three little lines in the uh, in the corner or in the middle wherever you want to put it and that just the, the users can click on that and see your full menu if they want to but the key thing for responsive design again is if you think of someone on their phone they're like this scroll 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 they want everything on the home page really but in in a, a small digestible format so then if they are interested they can click through because what you don't want to do is make your users make a decision too soon you want them to get to know you and, be, and then they're like okay now i trust them enough to find out more about their puppy training services or photography or whatever and um, but uh, the elementary tool that i meant sorry i'm rabbit harking on about Elementor. Um, no, the, no, I love, you've made me a convert too. <laughs> <laughs> but the, um, but yeah, that tool has, um, it's so simple. It has like a little icon that allows you to switch between um, the desktop view and the mobile view and the tablet view. So you can see how, how your design looks on the different devices. And it also allows you to hide things. So if you decide, okay, I, Say on the desktop, you might have um, a nice picture and then some text. Maybe on the mobile, you don't need that picture. You just have the text. Uh, and okay. also to, yeah, and to decrease this, this. So I was talking about white space, which is mm -hmm. super important. But if you think about how big uh, some white space is on your desktop, which looks perfect, then when you look at it on your mobile, it might be taking up too much screen. So, so maybe on the mobile version, you make that a little bit smaller. So we've covered very briefly some of the stuff that to consider with websites but what if somebody wants to sell something uh, do they have to have specific plugins to sell something from a website okay so that is a great reason to use wordpress because um if say for example you just started your business and you didn't know you wanted to sell something you know if you have wordpress you can literally just install a plugin which is free and the one i like to use is woocommerce and you can be you can set up your shop you know in a, in a few days really you could have it up and running in a day if you worked really hard on it and didn't have that many products and it, it simply allows you to add products in 
um, and you could add a few to get started and then add more as you go along. You don't have to launch the shop with every product that you've got. Um, and you can also add another plugin which enables you to link that shop to um, Instagram or, or Facebook so that you can also sell on other platforms that you're investing your time in. Could you tell us about any small business websites you've been working on recently? Um, yeah, so there was one that, that went live just before Christmas um, and they, that's called feraland.com and they're a garden design and antique company so they sell wow. garden they source and sell garden antiques and that was such a dream to work on looking at all those products you know and you uploading products that are boring this was definitely not I was like I need that I need that <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah no it was it was brilliant and um yes I think with them I helped them with their branding as well so when they came to me they were using like black and white because they wanted it to feel like a book but they were very much um they're what I call an autumnal brand. So they are, they're very, you know, it's all about nature and actually the gardens that they create are wild gardens, you know, so the black and white, they didn't understand what it was, why it wasn't working, um, but that's what it was. It was just like the simple things. So changing the black to like a, a charcoal gray, like, like an old book. If you think if you get an old book, mm. um, it is, it is sort of yellowy pages. It's not white, is it? Even new books aren't white. They've got that sort of natural, uh, creamy feel to it so that's just doing that that simple change they were like oh gosh yeah and um keeping that wild feel throughout their website so I know I was before I was saying about the, the straight lines but just keeping it within the grid but just sort of creeping out and with full bleed pictures um just just made such a difference and through their website because they've used WooCommerce to to, um, to create their shop, they can now sell directly on Instagram, which they were already doing. They were already selling through Instagram, but their process was, was quite long-winded. Whereas now with the, um, with the shop online, they can, um, they can publish it straight to Instagram and then add that as a product to their posts, which, which just makes it much better for them because they, the client can click through and see more details and see more images and ask any questions and it's got them from Instagram to their website oh that's amazing oh I, yeah it's you, you just make everything sound so easy <laughs> <laughs> which is what I often say to you when I call you with a website quick website query um <laughs> we've talked about WordPress but I know that there are other platforms like I tried to use Squarespace so what makes you so passionate about WordPress I think the thing with WordPress is that it's so scalable. Um, and you know, when you first start out your business, you've got no idea what it is. Well, most people I didn't I know that, you know, you start off with one idea of what you want to do, and then you find out what your clients actually want, you know, and actually they love this part of you more, or you decide actually I am gonna launch that shop or create that membership or write a course. Um, and these are all things that are so easy with WordPress. Um, and one of the things with you, Rona, um, when your website got taken down and in that time while you were trying to create another site, you lost all of your SEO juice, didn't you? Um, which, was, which was a nightmare. And that's the good thing. If you're trying to switch platforms, if you do say switch from, say you were on Squarespace now or Shopify, and then you wanted to switch to WordPress or any other one, just, just got to watch the, the, the links and all of the things that you've built up over the time, make sure it does, you don't lose that. And so, so that's why I love WordPress because you, you can just stay with WordPress and it will grow with you and you don't have to worry about all, all the, that sort of stuff. So I know, like me, you've got an online course. Could you share with us some of the details about what the course involves and how what the format is? So, yeah, I do have an online course. It's called the Website Formula um, and it's taken it, it basically walks you through everything that you need to know step by step to create a really good website. And even if that is just the one page to get started, um, you can come back in, you can do another page another time. Uh, you, as your business grows, you can get back in and learn the next part. So it's, it's a really, it's a course that will last you the lifetime of your website. And um, also um, there's a Facebook group where you can ask questions and everyone is on the same setup. So if you are trying to build your website at the minute, and you have tried to look on YouTube, for example, you know, you look on YouTube, you find something, you're like, 
oh yeah, that's how I want to do my header. And then they're telling you to install something else that you don't have, um, or it doesn't work because of the theme you've chosen. But, um, but within the course, I take you through everything and explain why you should help you with choosing things and um, why you should go down that route and not get taken off on a tangent by lots of different people giving you different advice. So the format of the course, is it a package you can work through on your own or is it released weekly like my course? It is released weekly because I think it is so important to follow it step by step. Whereas if I just gave everything right at the beginning, people might hop in at the end and the exciting bit, the, the uh, creating the pages. Um, but you really have to consider your branding, the planning. So the first module is planning. Um, and I know I touched on that before. It's so important to think about what you want your website to do for you and what you what you want the visitor to do when they they come to your website and think about the pages that you need. And in the planning section as well, I talk about other pages that you need, like the legal things. I, I don't go into detail on legal things because I am not a lawyer, um, but I do um, just just tell you what you need so you can um, hire the right person or buy the template for your um for your cookie policy and all that sort of thing yeah yeah and your privacy and your terms and conditions Mm. um and so so yeah so I start with planning then we look at branding because that is super important to make sure everything is branded consistently so everything you're putting out there looks the same as I was saying before um and this can really affect the clients that you're attracting you know if you're trying to um attract uh, women for example to your website and your website is all very dark colors and very masculine then that might make a woman click off um, and I'm and I think it's important to establish what your niche is as well and I help you with that in in that module and then the third module is all about getting started with WordPress so I talk you through step by step what you need to do help you get your website up in the first instance Um, And then we go through and I show you each of the sections, show you how to create a menu. Um, It's just it's just every video gives you an actionable thing that you can do on your website. And even if you just did one of those videos a day or, you know, you're going to move forward with your website so quickly. Um, And then after that, it's about design. So what makes what makes the design of a website work? Um, what converts well, things like sliders. I don't advocate the use of sliders on a website. Um, I know they were very popular, but they're quite distracting and they don't convert well. Um, and then and then finally on module five, I let you actually get to designing your pages. Um, and I talk about templates as well. So how to use the templates and how to um, implement them to make your life easier moving forward. And it's just to stop, help stop you making the mistakes that you might make or get that confusion that you might get with lots of different teachers teaching trying to teach you trying to you to get to where you need to be with your website and that's the final week week five that's week five and the final week is week six which is launching your website so um so yeah so you have obviously we've done all this amazing work we need to launch it so in this module I help you make sure it's optimized I talk about SEO um I talk about the the things that you can do to make your site faster, to secure it, um, how to add so many things, like how to add a a Facebook pixel, um, how to make sure your Google Analytics is set up. Even if you're not ready to use these things right now, it's just good to have that there. And then when you are ready, you can jump in. Or in the case of Google Analytics, for example, it's super important to set that up straight away because the sooner that you start tracking um, what visitors are doing on your website the sooner that you can use it to help you um, decide what direction your website is, is going in or where to spend your efforts improving and even if you never look at the analytics right now it's just good to have it there in the background collecting it and it's a super simple thing to do we covered so much Kelly before we finish off my big thing with this podcast is to give my listeners three practical tips so each week I'm going to ask my um, guests to give me their three practical tips so what are yours okay so the first one which may be a little controversial um, is that you shouldn't put social media icons like right at the top of your home page or any page 
because what happens is you finally got someone to your website say you got them through a blog or through an instagram post or whatever you got them to come from facebook you know you've dragged them out of these like time sucks and you've got them on your website and the first thing you're doing is saying oh come and look at me on instagram you're sending them back down the uh, instagram rabbit hole um so it's super important to have them on there um and especially for someone like you rona who you know you you specialize in instagram um so it's good for you to have a section about instagram and definitely you want it on there but i just put it further down the page and definitely in your footer and another great place to expand more on your social presence is in the contact page. So you could talk about, you know, if you had a Facebook group, you could put that as something on your contact page. And if that was the most important thing you want them to do, then yeah, put it higher up. If the most important thing is the um, them to get in touch, then you put it below, below that. So that's number one. So I yeah. need to do some work then on Clarona. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was very trendy at, at one time to put them up yeah. there but obviously now you put them up there and you see your conversions and you see that people are leaving quite quickly yeah. um, and you're trying to work out why because obviously it's it is exciting you know the Instagram you were like oh actually you know do I want to work with this person let me have a look at their Instagram feed and then before you know it you're you're getting alerts you're in your messages you're you're off you've mm -hmm. you've lost them from your website um so so it's also good to say if you if you do have Instagram feed to put your Instagram feed in your website as well. That's yeah, great. That's what I've done. Yeah. Yeah. So it keeps yeah. them on there. They can see, okay, I trust you because mm -hmm. I, you're, you know, you're hiring a photographer, for example, look at those pictures. They're amazing. Um, or a business coach. And there's all this great, great tips. You don't have to leave the website because that's the key. And that really helps with SEO as well. Keeping people on your website for as long as possible. Yeah. Um, so number two, Kelly. So number two, I know I keep harping on about the contact form, um, but um, it is to have a contact form basically on your contact us page. Not an email so, address. Not an email address. So I see a lot with people say mail. It's, there's a type of link that you can add that has mail to in the background. Mm. And then it allows people to just click that link and then it opens up their email their email program, which sounds amazing, but what if their website, their computer, sorry, is set up to the wrong email program? So a lot of people have the default email program set up is different to the one that they use every day. So especially for someone who's not that technically minded, it's it's going to be quite confusing for it to be opening up. Or they might send you a message and it might not get sent because that email program is not set up. Or they get a horrible message, you know, set this up and they're like what <laughs> um so so the so having a form on there with as few fields as possible so if you don't need their phone number don't ask for their phone number because at putting that on there might make someone think actually i don't want to fill in this form because i don't i'm not ready to give them my phone number just yet um so keep it simple but a nice form uh with all the details you need and a nice button you know that that entices people to to actually fill it in and click through Okay, that's great. I've, yeah, I've, I'm very keen on, on that one. I, I know that you've done that on my website. And um, yeah, I think it, there's a bit of a mental block. You think you should give your email address, but it just can cause so many issues moving forward. So number three, Kelly. And actually, with what you were just saying then about issues moving forward, the other issue that having the email address means that bots can scrape that. Yes, so. that's what, yeah. Yeah, computer programs come along and they look at all the websites. So it's just, it's not a person, it's just a computer going out there, looking at everyone's websites and gathering email addresses. Now, if you've used your email address as your as your admin account on your, your website, you know, you've given them half of your, your, um, your login, for example, which could be a problem, but also you get loads of spam. No one likes spam. Good. Yeah, really good point. Okay, so number one was to um, make sure your social media icons are not at the top of your page. Number two is to have a contact form with a form to fill out rather than an email address. What's number three? So number three, and I think this is the most important one, is just to keep it simple and to try not to get too stressed about it. You know, people, they think, oh, I can't do it. You know, it's like, I know it's tech and I know it, it seems complicated, but if you just follow it step by step, and just keep your pages simple and make sure that what you want the user to do is as high as possible, then you're going to do everything you can really to make sure you've got a successful website. 
When you say as high as possible, do you mean high as possible on the page? Yes, so higher on the page. So anything that's important, you don't want to bury that at the bottom of the page. You want to put that higher up. So if you want someone to um, subscribe to your newsletter, make sure it's attractive, make sure they you know, offer them something and put it higher up your, your website. Maybe not right at the top, mm. um, but, you know, or if, if your main prop, probably most people's main thing is to um, that they want people to find out about their business. So, you know, tell them, tell people how you can help them. Um, but, but just keep it simple and just get started. Just, you know, <laughs> do stick one page up. It doesn't matter. You know, it's not like when you put a page up, there's thousands of people are going to look at it tomorrow. You know, you can change it tomorrow if you don't like it. It's, it's just, just good to get started. Yeah. What you've told me um, over the years is how, I, you know, it's very easy to have this fixed mindset that your website is done, you know, but you're very much, it's, I don't know how you describe it. Remind me how you describe it. Is it growing or something or evolving? Yeah, or? It's, it's constantly evolving your website. And if it's not, it's not going to work for your business because search engines don't like stagnant websites. If someone comes to your website six months ago and then comes back and you've got all the same products or the same images and it's all the same you know it's like you didn't convert them last time so you know why would it this time so and it's yeah it's just important to keep it just to keep it updated and and yeah it's not a, a lot of people have that mindset I can pay a developer and then it's finished but it's never finished you know you it's just constantly evolving and um and you should use it uh, like you use your other tools. You know, you wouldn't put um, a, a post on social media and then not post for six months. If you think of your website like that, you know, you just need to to keep it growing and to keep it current with your business. Mm, yeah. So, yeah, it's so important. And I think also nowadays, especially with what's been happening in the last almost year, we're spending so much time online um well more and more people are spending more time online and that's why it's so important that your website if because you might not be able to see people at the moment in person your website has to really do the job of that that you know marketing your business doesn't it mm -hmm. yeah and so. also it gives you the opportunity to pivot you know if you, you know, in this, this climate, you know, I've had quite a few clients who've pivoted to online learning, for example, when they do one-to-one -one learning. Um, so, so, so knowing how to, to, how to edit it yourself and how to under, how, understanding how your website can work can just allow you to do things with your business that you might not have thought possible before. There's just so much potential, isn't there? It's just, yeah. And with WordPress, it's always new people are developing new new plugins. And yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's really exciting. And I'm looking forward to um, working on my new website as well. But before um, we finish, Kelly, please, can you tell people where people can find you and your website and your social media? Okay, so um, my website is kellysparks.com um, and on there you can find out more about my course and um, I've also obviously found out everything on my website because I like everyone to go to my website and then be directed out. Um, but yes, you can also find me on YouTube um, and there's a link to, to my YouTube channel through my website too and on Instagram. So it's Kelly and then just spell out your surname, Kelly, because it's uh, Sparks, which is, yeah, yeah it's S-P-A-R-K-E-S. -E so it's kellysparks.com. And then on Instagram, I'm kellysparkswp. Great. Thank you so, so much, Kelly, for coming on the podcast and being my first ever, ever, ever guest. And I know that you have got so much knowledge about websites that this definitely will not be the one and only time that um, we speak on this podcast because there's just so much more that I feel that my listeners could benefit from hearing from you. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's been it's been so much fun, um, as always, with you, Rona. I do love working with you. Um, and yeah, I hope that I've helped some people. And I'd love to answer any questions. If anyone has any questions, then feel free to um, pop some comments onto uh, Rona's blog post. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Kelly. I'll see you soon. Thank you. See you soon.
So I hope you enjoyed that interview with Kelly. It was so lovely spending time with her. And she's got just so much knowledge about websites. Uh, it never ceases to amaze me. I've been working with her now for several years. She designed the Flower Owner website, the latest version. She also is the person behind my Instagram for Florist Online course platform. And she's yeah, it, what Kelly doesn't know about websites and WordPress isn't worth knowing. And she's such a lovely person as well. A pleasure to work with. And it's so nice to work with somebody technical who also is very creative and really cares about a brand's aesthetic. So I'll put links to Kelly's website below and also links to her social media platforms. Um, and of course, a link to a downloadable PDF with Kelly's tips. So I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Don't forget to subscribe to my podcast and YouTube channel. And I'll see you next week.